with with immense pleasure and heartfelt warmth i extend a sincere welcome to each and every one of you as we gather here today to honor and celebrate the remarkable achievements unwavering resilience and indomitable spirit of women from every corner of the globe as we convene for our annual outreach event to discuss the ssgs application cycle for women students in in aligarh muslim university we are also seizing this opportunity to coincide with the significance of international women's day that marked globally on march 8 so it, it is my indeed a privilege and honor for me to be your moderator for this event my name is sachin gupta i am a phd candidate in physics at university of massachusetts boston in united states and a current ssgs chair along with sanjay shekh so today uh, we come together not only to acknowledge the invaluable contribution of women in every facet of society but also to re reaffirm our commitment to gender equality and empowerment as we commemorate the progress made thus far we must also recognize the challenges that persist and pledge our unwavering support towards creating a more inclusive and equitable future for all so throughout history women have shattered barriers defied expectations and blazed trails in fields ranging from science and technology to politics arts and beyond their courage determination and resilience serve as a beacon of inspiration for generations to come reminding us of the limitless potential that lies within each and every individual regardless of the gender so on this special day let us not only celebrate the achievements of women but also reflect on the work that remains to be done let us amplify the voices of those who have been marginalized and ensure that every woman and girl has the opportunity to fulfill her dreams and aspiration and as a as, as a chair of ssgsa i assure you that sir sayed global scholar award has been trying from last 15 years to contribute in this to our best uh, possible capacity so thank you again everyone for joining and well, very welcome uh so let me quickly start with a uh, kind of thing that we are going to do so uh, i'll be briefly uh, telling you about what sgs is about and uh, about our women scholars and then we will be inviting our four esteemed speakers today professor veena maheshwari professor salma ahmed sadia tanveer and sarah shakhtar and then uh, our application team will be brief will be give you a little brief about our application process that is currently going on uh, and then we'll be taking q and uh, question and answer so if you have any questions feel free to write in the chat box or please uh, uh, you and or you can unmute yourself at the end and then can ask okay so uh, I'll be sharing my screen, and then we can just uh, talk about it quickly. So I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. so uh, i am sure uh, most of you uh, knows about how sgsa works uh, just fix this so i am sure that most of you know about how sgsa works but just to uh, give you other brief one more time that sgsa basically helps you in applying for grad school all over the world they are include united states europe uh, or uh, uh, around the world so we basically uh, help you to cover the expenses for the test like gre gmat tofil and so on and we also pay the application fees for five universities uh, and then that also includes sending scores to five universities of gre and tofil so uh, we uh, it's it's kind of cost you like around 12 to 100000 1000 or to 1200 dollars every year to every candidate and along along with uh, offering financial assistance we also offers personalized plans uh, we basically offers you mentors that helps you making plans evaluate your progress uh, discuss each and everything that includes which university are you going to apply what is the best thing that you, you uh, practice you really have to follow and so on and so forth and then 
uh, we helps you in giving application support that helps you in giving your essays, your resume. Uh, maybe we can we also help you in writing emails to professors, uh, how to approach them, and so on and so forth. And our, our help does not only stop here. Once you come to US or Europe or you know, wherever you go, we try to introduce you to the families and friends around in the town that you are going to so that you can feel comfortable and get access to it. So here is, a, here is a brief statistics of, you know, about our reach so far that we have a reach in US, Canada, Europe, Asia, Australia, and uh, in, in a lot of countries that, that are around more than 21. And our scholars has, you know, are still in, still are, has already been uh, get through in more than 110 universities all over the world. And total, we have more than 156 scholars. So it's a, it's a pretty good number. Uh, SAGS is a very competitive uh, uh, scholarship. Every year, we really get a lot of applications and we really score like short is around 10%. Like, for example, last year, we get like around uh, 260 applications and we took 225 students. So the ratio is around like 10% and sometimes less. Here's a list of our successful scholars. So uh, we like, uh, our successful rate is around 40%. Uh, you can see from the graph. Uh, so because it's, this event is spe specifically for our women scholars, here is a uh, list of how many scholars, women scholars that we are taking every year. So these are the data of the recent five years. You can see that in 21, we take like 13 uh, women scholars out of 28, then 10. And last year, interestingly, women scholars get uh, supersede the, the 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 male scholars, which which is a very good sign that our like our women students from Aligarh they really want to come forward and uh, want to explore the world. And here's an statistics of our admits. Uh, so uh, most of the uh, women scholars who get selected, as I just mentioned, that forty percent of them really get into into good universities. Uh, so the, he's, here are the list of our some of our highlighted scholar. Uh, Bini Zia, who's a current uh, chief architect in Intel Corporations, and she has been recently nominated by State of Oregon uh, to represent women in engineering. And then we have Ruchidana, who is, was also recognized by the Forbes as a top power woman of Middle East in 2020, and she's a current president of Duluth Medical. Then we have Amna Arif, who's a senior scientist in biotherapeutics. Muspira Jalani, she's a faculty at National College of Ireland. Meda Sharma, Taru Saraswat, she's a she works at Microsoft, then Mikasa, she works in Apple, and then we have our scholars who are working in Dell and, 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 and in many, many big companies and in working in many big labs and universities. So th this is just like a small list out of our many successful women scholars uh, who are around the world and uh, uh, bringing laurels for both as a GSA and, and uh, Now, uh, I think that's pretty much, and then uh, now I would like to invite Ali Bhai to welcome our, to introduce our chief, our chief guest, our speakers, uh, and then we'll move forward. Ali Bhai, please. Thank you, Sachin. <clears throat> As alaikum, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and scholars. It is a joy to introduce one of our distinguished guests of honor today, Professor Salma Ahmed. Uh, Professor Ahmed holds both an MBA and a PhD and is a formidable force in academia, showcasing a commitment to excellence in research and education. Her academic journey is marked by a focus on supply chain management, knowledge management, and information systems. Professor Ahmed boasts an impressive record with over 90 published papers and active participation in more than 50 conferences, both nationally and internationally. In addition to her prolific research, she is an accomplished author having written the insightful book, How to Write and Analyze Cases. This resource was released in New Delhi in, on, uh, in 2011 and it reached a global audience and is now in the learning modules of an international conference on global supply chain management. Beyond academia, Professor Salma Ahmed is committed to fostering learning and development. She conducts faculty development programs on case writing and analysis and business simulation games. And she showcases her dedication to nurturing the next generation of scholars and leaders. Currently serving as a member in charge at Dabakhana Tibia College, AMU Aligarh, 
Professor Salma Ahmed holds another dimension to her multi-faceted contributions to AMU. As we celebrate Women's Day, it is an honor to have Professor Salma Ahmed with us, a trailblazer who continues to inspire through her academic prowess and her dedication to the pursuit of knowledge. We extend a warm welcome to girl students, encouraging them to apply for the program and be part of this enriching academic community. Please um, join me in welcoming Professor Salma Ahmed. And because we have today two um, guests of honors, let me also take the chance uh, to introduce our second um, guest of honor speaker as well. So I can be done with both the introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce uh, our next guest of honor, Professor Bina Maheshwari. Um, with an MD in pathology since 1987, she has risen through the ranks at JN Medical College, AMU Aligarh, and currently serves as a Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and the Principal at Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College. Professor Maheshwari, a specialist in neuropathology, received training at AIIMS New Delhi, contributing significantly to medical education. As a chairperson from 2010 to 2013, she transformed the landscape, upgrading laboratories and establishing the Immunopathology Lab for Advanced Tumor Diagnosis at AMU. With around 200 publications in esteemed journals, she has supervised numerous theses and played pivotal roles in medical examinations at various universities. Her multifaceted involvement includes roles as tabulator of, for MBBS examinations, the library in charge of the Medical College Library, and active participation in committees addressing women's issues and anti-ragging initiatives at AMU. Notably, as we all know, GNMC was established in 1962. It is constantly ranking among the top 15 medical colleges in India, and currently it holds the 22nd position among medical colleges by NIRF, and boasts about 26 departments and three centers. With 226 qualified teachers, we anticipate the college will continue its upward trend under the leadership of Professor Maheshwari's deanship and chairmanship. With these words, allow me to, to welcome um, both Professor Salma Ahmed and Professor Marina Maheshwari, a distinguished, both distinguished Aligarians shaping AMU and its scholars. First, we request Professor Salma Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you, Rizvi sir, uh, for the wonderful uh, introduction. And um, uh, thank you to Mr. Sachin Gupta, also address uh, Mr. Rehan Bakri sir. Thank you all of you for giving me the opportunity to interact with young and budding minds. Uh, so I address the students gathered here. First, I would like to give you a brief of a background of SSGC uh, essay, which I'm sure still they need uh, a more holistic uh, appraisal of what it is all about. SSGS, I'll make it very simple for you. SSGSA stands basically for Sir Sayed, Global Scholar Award. And uh, basically it's an initiative of the alumni of Aligarh Muslim University who are now settled in USA. An initiative in fact of Sir Sayed Education Society of North America. And the basic objective is to help meritorious students who aspire to seek higher education in developed countries and fulfill their dream. Uh, they extend help in the form of uh, mentoring and in the form of financial assistance about little about which uh, I think was uh, shared by Mr. Sachin Gupta. And uh, uh, where financial support is concerned, they pay for the application fee like a TOEFL or GMAT or a GRE. And mentoring could be to any extent. It could begin with identifying the tests, deciding on the choice of universities, because that's really confuses a person uh, resume writing. Uh, now, resume writing is very critical because every university has its own re uh, specified requirement. And therefore, you need to customize it to their needs so that your application is well accepted. Now, SSG um, 
SA first award was instituted way back in 2006, some, uh, 17 years earlier. And the program has been running successfully for the last 17 years. Now, what we need to do students is we need to first identify what is it that, what education that we look forward to from which country. So your choice of program could be a master's or it could be a PhD in any uh, area of your choice. Say you're a student of physics, you can go in for a PhD in physics or a master's in physics. Now, who can apply? Anybody who has been a student of Aligarh Muslim University uh, who has completed his high school, secondary school, graduation, master's, or is even in the final semester of a four-year graduate course could apply for this award. And he could be from any background. It could be from arts, humanities, uh, law, management, social sciences, engineering, medicine, the list is endless. It's open for student of any background. Now, the process of selection is very critical. Your application, that is your CV is reviewed by an academic expert. And once satisfied, you're even called in for an interview. The interview is very intensive. So you have to take it very seriously. This personal interview, they try to assess your knowledge. That is your conceptual clarity. Uh, and also your level of motivation, your commitment, your level of motivation, your attitude towards work and your attitude towards life too. The SSGSC program has completed 17 years with 100% success rate, which means those who had been selected have got, have secured admission to the best of universities across uh, 111 universities across 24 different countries. And they have been directly helped 150 students and indirectly that is through mentoring, they have been able to provide extend help to more than 400 plus students. A very notable feature, which uh, really is uh, something I would like to share with you students is for that for the last eight years, 2015 onwards, this program itself is being run by those who have been the beneficiaries. So these beneficiaries, in fact, are holding positions in different capacity. Uh, somebody is looking into marketing, somebody into mentoring, someone in promotion and outreach, finance, website. So they are getting an opportunity. They themselves are getting an op opportunity to hone their organization skills, team management skills, leadership skills, and so on. This group, I must stress, is working tirelessly and working selflessly for the last 17 years, simply with the objective to support anybody who aspires to uh, undertake a higher education abroad. And it is open for all students of Aligarh Muslim University. And the only criteria I mentioned, the only criteria, and I repeat, is simply merit and merit alone. So. If you are a meritorious student, you have a good chance of being selected here. Now, why is it that I am uh, motivating you or propelling you, pushing you to go for education abroad? We all are a product of the education system itself. We are a product of the education system we have undergone or have been exposed to. I, as a mother, when I think of sending my daughter to a school, I look for the best school in Aligarh. So this is exactly because the entire grooming process, a transformation journey, she, she'll go through once she goes to a good school. Thereby, therefore, when you think of university abroad, this is what you do. You pick on the best university because again, that's a transformation journey. It's going to transform you from uh, uh, in every way. Now, study abroad, let me just uh, list a few advantages. Uh, say, for instance, you are studying in uh, USA, you would get local students from USA. Beyond that, you will also get students from uh, who will be your peers, your classmates, students from Korea, China, uh, European world, uh, in different parts of the world. So there will be a diversity, a diverse group with whom you will interact. They'll come from different backgrounds with different perspectives. That would really challenge you. And the level of competitiveness within you is going to increase. 
then the pattern of studies abroad is quite different than the pattern of studies here in, uh, in your domestic country or in India. Pattern of studies abroad is more practical, more project oriented, more industry centric. It's a more industry centric education, more discussion based, team based learning, wherein you need to think out of the box, wherein your own creativity, your innovation is going to increase within yourself and thereby your chances of employability is going to also increase. So that's the another advantage that we get. Further on, uh, international education system is a more flexible system. We can make a choice of subjects that we want to read. Say, I want to study computers, but I can combine computers, study of computers with uh, study of music. So that's the kind of a choice we can make. So we can pursue a career in computers. At the same time, we can uh, uh, keep alive a passion, that of music with, within ourselves. In the in Indian context, the new education policy is also advocating it. But then that's still new. It will take a long time for it to stabilize. So that's the third advantage we get. And the fourth, fourth undoubtedly, undoubtedly, is your overall personality development. You develop self-confidence. You learn to manage on your own in a strange world. You grow on a continuous basis. basis. Uh, there is no complacency which can set in ever. You're, you become more competitive and your overall hor horizon broadens. Now, since it's a focus on uh, celebrating Women's Day, my target audience is also the women, the girl students here who are registered, uh, who have logged in, the little women here. My advice to you is do not be terrified or paranoid at the thought of coming out of your locality, your town or your city, and finally your country. Be brave to come out of your cocoon. International country definitely means new faces, but you'll make new friends, no problem. It means new food. So forget your dal and chawal and do roti, do boti, and embrace pasta, mefoons, uh, and other food. Learn to embrace it. It means a new culture, but that does not mean you discard your Indian culture. You retain the select few and also adopt a good new from the Western culture. So you, you'd therefore be able to maintain a balance. It's like keeping your two foot, one on the brake, which the Indian culture asserts to keep yourself in check, and the other on the accelerator, which will allow you to soar. And that's a wonderful balance that you can have. Now, new faces, new food, new culture also means new possibilities and new opportunities. So, girl students, you all have immense potential. I repeat, you have immense potential. Just explore and give yourself a chance. Uh, what you lack, in general, girls lack is a lack of self-confidence, a lack of self-esteem, and the fear of speaking up. My request to you is shed it all and believe when I say you too can have it all. Studying abroad is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So seize this moment and you have the SSGSA program and the alumni in USA in North America to support you to hold your hand at every step. Take benefit of this. And let me assure you, there will be no looking back. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ahmad, for, for such a very strong and very energetic words. Uh, I'm sure it must have benefited and will keep benefiting our women scholars or all the scholars, I would say. Uh, when you say that be brave to come out of the cocoon and explore roti uh, and also pasta, uh, keeping your Indian values together, I think it's a what is a great advice an experienced person like you can give. So thank you again for such a very strong and beautiful words. Uh, th thank you again for joining us today. Uh, now I would like to request Professor Maheshwari uh, to unmute yourself and uh, please share with us your experience. Thank you.
Yeah, so a very good morning to Rizvi Sahab, Sachin Gupta, other coordinators for giving me this opportunity to share something from my faculty, that is the faculty of medicine. Dr. Salma has elaborately told all about SSG SA, and I hope I don't need to repeat everything. The one, most one common thing which I want to again say is that girls should have developed confidence. They must uh, develop confidence to come and face the world. In Aligarh, in AMU, they have a very good opportunity to study. And almost all the subjects concerned are taken up over here. Think of anything and it is available in AMU. Now, the only thing is how to go further about from it. And I think SSG SA provides a forum for that. But for that, you have to be aware of what it is, which has been elaborately told by Dr. Salma already. So the one thing which I would like to say is the medical profession. In the medical profession, there are lots and lots and lots of avenues. The <clears throat> thing is how to go about it. There are innumerable subjects coming up from within the subject. Like, for example, taking one as small, my small subject of pathology. So when we were students, pathology was just limited to few things. But now, with the advancing world, it is breaking up into many such small, 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 small subjects like immunopathology, histopathology, cytopathology, and so on. And from the, in that also, now we are coming on to molecular genetics and other things. So to get this precision knowledge and to develop super speciality, I think SSGSA is the best forum to help us go in depth into any thing because most of the knowledge over here is from MBBS students, we get basic knowledge. Now, whatever the student thinks that they want to pursue, then they can get a push within this. In India also, many uh, super specialty centers are being developed, but not to that precision as in foreign countries. So the girl students, as Dr. Salma already said, should come out of their cocoons and try to capture all these things. It will make them self-confident, expose them to all the hardships which they will face once coming out from Aligarh. Aligarh is a very small and conservative city, but the alumni of AMU have spread all across the world. After 30 years, I happened to visit USA when my daughter was there and I saw my fellow students doing so well over there. So the opportunity given to them, you have to capture the opportunities. Some are financially weak, others have the enthusiasm, but not the means. So I think this SSGSA will provide the best forum to them. With that, I again promote all the uh, women to have a good future and to get the best opportunity from whatever means they have. And with the help of this SSG essay, I definitely think AMU students are going to rise to new heights. The NRF ranking also promotes scholars from within India, from outside India, and to especially the women candidates. And if they help, if the help is given from them, I think INRF status ranking also will increase as it has been constantly going up in the last few years. With that, I once again thank SSGSA for providing me this opportunity to say something in this forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Dr. Maheshwari, for uh, pointing out on a very interesting point uh, about the technical need our students in AMU need to explore about and how SSGSA can help with that. And thank you, thank you very much for motivating our scholars, our women uh, students in the in the league for to apply to SSGSA. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Uh, so after listening to our such wonderful deans from Aligarh, uh, let me bring you an great opportunity to listen uh, from our, our SHGC scholars to uh, their first hand experiences in Europe and US. So for that, I would like to invite Sadia Tanvir, who is currently in University of Ulu, Finland. Uh, Sadia P was our SHGC scholar from 2016 and 17, and she did her bachelor's and master's in chemistry from, from Aligarh, if, if I'm correct. So uh, Sadia Tanvir, please. Thank you so much, Sachin, and SSGSA team for reaching out to me and giving me this opportunity to share my experience uh, as a female SSGSA scholar. So as Professor Salma Ahmed and Professor Veena Maheshwari pointed out the importance of studying abroad, again, it was also my dream to study abroad, but I was clueless. Like I, I had no idea where to start and where to like what to do. And I think it was back when I was doing my master's, uh, in my first year of master's, I, ca I came to know about SSGSA for the first time. It was Saf Bhai who came for a, like uh, for an event, SSGSA event in our department. And that's how I came to know about, okay, there is this program called SSGSA. And I think it was SESA at that point, it wasn't even SSGSA. <laughs> but again, uh, it's like when you are, uh, in the process of applying, you you have all sort of imposter syndrome, and you know you don't really know like if my CV is good enough or not. So I was like again not sure if I'm gonna apply, and also like being a female scholar, there there's this thing, which like basically is kind uh, attached to us. Like our parents are always concerned about the safety and all the issues that like, and well, basically the biggest question of all, getting married and then start to do anything so well again at that point i didn't really think about if i'm going to apply or not so well again moving to my final year of masters i came to again attend a, an event by mudassir bhai mudassir yatu bhai who was also as a csa scholar at that point and basically i reached out to him after that event and i was like do you really think i can apply and can i get selected or what and he's like you know what when we started to apply even we thought like we are not good enough but it's a uh, like SSGSA is a good starting point and maybe you should apply. Well, I applied in 2016 and I got selected. And now that's the year when I, I also got married. So <laughs> the question again was in uh, like after marriage, you really don't get to focus on like if you really have to continue your studies or not. So at that point I was like, should I apply? Should I not? Then my mentor at that point was Mohsin Jahan Kazi Bhai. And he was like, you know what, it's like, it's not impossible that you can't come abroad and study. And well, I consulted my husband. I talked to my family and everyone was like, well, there was always this apprehension and concerns. But eventually I started applying. And of course, as I said, there's always this imposter syndrome. So I didn't really know what to do, what, what not to do. So Mohsin Bhai was always there to guide me and he was like, keep applying, always have patience because these things take time. Well, I wasn't getting any answer for PhD. So eventually I came to know about this international master's degree program for the research chemist. And as Sachin mentioned, I had done my master's in chemistry. So at that point, it was again like a dilemma if I should again do a master's because I already had a master's degree before. So, but then it was a Fulbright scholarship, like it, my tuition fee was covered and I was getting a monthly stipend. So after a lot of discussion and consultations, I was like, okay, maybe let, let me get, give this program a chance. So I went ahead with it. Well, after like two years when I graduated, uh, again, there was this dilemma because my husband was based in Doha, Qatar, and I was in Finland. And we were like... Right, like we were, it was just like in the beginning of our marriage, two years. So at that point, again, after a lot of, you know, uh, thinking and everything, I was like, okay, maybe I should go back to Doha and see, there are also co colleges and universities there. So apl I applied to Hamad bin Khalifa University in Doha and I got selected and then COVID happened. <laughs> so... Again, there was like, I was supposed to join in August, 2020 and well, COVID happened and due to some administrative glitch, they were not able to offer me a scholarship. And I was like, 
uh, I am not really going to do a PhD without a scholarship. And I think at that point, I was co-mentoring two of the SSGS scholars with Sayyid Ali Rizvi Bhai. So he was, again, always there to guide me. And like I was always coming back to him, calling him, ranting about things. And I was like, uh, please tell me what to do and what not to do. So eventually, when I wasn't able to join HBKU, I applied again back in Finland, uh, and I was selected. So right now I'm working, like I'm in third year of my PhD. Um, I'm working on the development of first row transition metal uh, catalyst for the activation of carbon dioxide. And as a woman in science, uh, science STEM field actually, I would like to point out like three things from my personal experience. First is like, your timeline, it's your timeline. You don't really have to follow the norm. Like, okay, I have to graduate by this age and I have to get married by this age and I have to have kids. It's your timeline, it's your life. No, tell, Let nobody else to tell you when you have to do something or when you are going to do something. It's your life, you have to decide. And of course, your decision, you shouldn't be very inconsiderate. So you should take in account everything, but again, prioritize yourself first. This is my personal uh, like takeaway for you guys. Second thing, again, being a researcher in the field of science, I know, and again, it's not just about science. Like if you're doing a PhD, you know, there's like a lot of mental stress and you're like, there's a lot of frustration. You're not getting your results. And then there's also your personal life that you have to focus on. So again, prioritize your mental health. Like women, unfortunately, women's scholars, well, not women's scholars, like females in general, we have this like extra pressure on our, on our heads that we have to, you know, like, uh, follow or like you know take care of everything basically you have to focus on your family you have to focus on your education you have to focus on your career so again it's like very important that you again prioritize your mental health and we don't really discuss about mental health and not we're not very open or vocal about it but it is very important again lastly being an SSGSA scholar SSGSA is like more than like a family for me uh, I like I cannot thank them enough. I, they had been always there for me. Mohsin Bhai, Ali Rizvi Bhai. So it's like every time I was in some sort of a doubt or I needed some guidance, I could always reach out to them. And being a part of SSGSA is great. So my last thing for all the female scholars is like I had been there. I was in your position where you are right now, where you are going to like, you know, you know, you think you want to apply and you want to apply actually and but you don't have like that push so start start somewhere with patience and everything and believe in yourself so yeah thank you thank you Sadia P for uh, for sharing your story when uh, when someone tells you in an abstract just work hard is one thing but when someone really shows you by your action by following the dream persistently for so many years and finally achieve that what you have been dreaming for is a very different thing. So yeah, thank you, Sadia P, for sharing such a very strong story uh, with us. Thank you, thank you again. Uh, now I would like to listen. Uh, I would like to invite uh, our last speaker, Sadish, uh, who is uh, currently in Clemson University pursuing a PhD in physics. I think Sadish did her bachelor's and master's in physics itself from Aligarh. And uh, yeah, here we have Sarish to share our story. Sarish, please. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, so firstly, I want to say it's it's kind of overwhelming for me because I remember attending uh, SSGSA webinars just like everyone is doing, listening to our SSGSA scholars, their proud moments and asking questions in webinars. So yeah, it's it's overwhelming to be one of these speakers uh, right now, sharing my journey uh, all the way from asking questions in webinar to being a speaker in webinar. So I'm really thankful to the SSGS chair and all the other members of SSGS family. Yeah, so I remember I came to know of SSGS. At that time, the name was uh, CISA as Sadia mentioned. So uh, I was in 10th standard and my my sister was 
in fact i i remember the distinct uh, i have that distinct memory of uh, of that my my sister was sitting near near me and she was uh, scrolling a uh, facebook and she stumbled upon a post and it was about some organization amu based organization that assists uh, students uh, in in going abroad for studies so at that time uh, though i don't remember right now the specifics of the post but there were some names on on that post and there was that that moment of inspiration i kind of get obsessed like wow these these people are from my university and they are at such good places i too want to be a part of this this organization at that time honestly uh i was not uh, having any academic goal attached to uh, going abroad but uh, it was just pure obsession and uh, what we say american dream that that we have going to going to usa the united states of Amer america clicking fancy uh, pics in front standing in front of statue of liberty and walking onto the streets of new york it was it started just like that and uh, yeah so on that post uh, there was one name and uh, i i out of that moment of inspiration i just quickly texted uh, him he was none other than wasikul bhai and he then turned out to be my mentor uh, in this uh, mentor mentee uh, thing, and I talked to him. I I remember I texted him only in three lines, asking him like how how it works, how I can apply. And I was at that time in tenth standard. I remember like he replied me in in two lengthy paragraphs explaining me everything. Though he knew that at the, at that time I'm uh, I'm not eligible for applying, but he the way he replied the the time he gave uh, at that time i i was like yes i want to be like him and helping others once i go there so it started like that and then during my plus 2 uh, those two years were quite deciding years for me at that time i i developed interest in physics because i if if uh, if you know uh, the coaching uh, in 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 11th and 12th we all there is this trend that everyone is doing coaching everyone is uh, preparing for iit amu btech so i too was in that line i joined uh, shakir sir's classes so uh, if you guys know that coaching is quite famous for uh, for the physics itself so during that time i developed quite a uh, good understanding in physics by the end of my 12th i was certain about one thing that whatever i'm going to study whatever i'm i'm going to do in academics it should be related to this subject i should do something in physics uh so yeah then i i though i gave a exam for beta amu btech and then iit iit also but then i finally chose bsc in physics from amu there again uh, exploring more into this field uh i then during my masters i i did my project in in my masters thesis as well as my my summer project during masters it everything was in astrophysics so that interest in physics narrowed down to astrophysics but unfortunately astrophysics as a course was not offered in in the physics department amu at that time uh, i already i already got uh, selected in ssgsa uh, uh, group this family of ssgsa though at that time i didn't take it uh, like i i was proud that i am a part of this family but uh, i was not planning to go abro abroad at that time but then i realized ssgsa is the only golden key that can help me in achieving my dream of pursuing uh, a research in astrophysics uh, because right now it's it's not provided in my university but through ssgsa i can i can go abroad and study in in one of the best universities in usa or europe and and pursue my dream so 
yeah, SSGSA helped me in achieving my dream, coming here in USA and getting guidance at each point uh, from writing uh, SOP, how to correct, like, uh, how to make my CV better, everything. In the whole apl application process, my mentors helped me and not just mentors, like, if you are asking anything randomly in the group, there are people, a lo lot of people who are helping you. And the best part is that this uh, mentor-mentee relationship, it doesn't end at the point where you just get selected in a university. It continues, the bond continues and everyone is there to help you. And as a, as a female, it's, uh, your concern is just not uh, attached or limited to getting uh, the best university, but you as well as your family is concerned about your safety. So SSGSA provided that comfort and uh, that, that confidence to my family as well as me that I'm going through a trusted and well-reputed organization to, uh, to a new country. So that also helped uh, in that. So I'm really thankful to all the SSGSA family for helping me, for giving me this, this platform for sharing uh, my journey. Thank you. Thank you, Sarish, uh, for sharing such a wonderful story, starting from your high school, uh, coming to US and now being a part of social media team of SSGSA. Uh, whenever we listen like someone's story and how did how can SSGSA help you or how did SSGSA really played a pivotal role in your life? It's really motivating and it really gives an immense pleasure uh, and give a lot of hope that what we are doing is, is a work of great, great thing and following the path of Sarsi Ramatka. So thank you again uh, for sharing such a wonderful story. Uh, so uh, of course this event uh, was about you know Women's Day, but that also includes a briefing you about SSGSA application process that is going on. So for that, I would like to invite for us by for quickly, you know, briefing about SSGSA application process, and then we will take some questions if you have. So class by please, and I'll share share my screen and then. Uh... Hi, uh, thank you, Sachin Bhai. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, and for us, I'll be going over some of the steps in the application process for the SSGSA application for this year. Our application has opened and it will be open till the 11th of March. So I encourage everyone to apply as soon as possible. And I'll now go over some of the steps. So uh, for the SSGSA application, you need to satisfy the eligibility criteria, which is that you must either be currently enrolled or have completed a four year uh, degree from AMU. Uh, it is also possible that if you have not completed a four year bachelor's degree, then you can apply with a three years bachelor's degree and have currently or uh, been uh, currently completed or enrolled in a master's degree. The reason why we have this four year requirement for um, a study beforehand is because uh, pretty much all universities in the US and around the world have this requirement that you should have four years of undergraduate education. So that is why this is uh, an important eligibility criteria in addition to the fact that you uh, are from AMU as well. Um, now, uh, we do have some examples and a bit more about this eligibility criteria that you can check on our website. Uh, I'll now just go over a few of the steps in the application itself and how our selection criteria works. So our application uh, consists of two parts. One is the online application where you go to our website at ssgsa.us and you can uh, submit this application that we have. Uh, some uh, it's a good idea to have some of these documents on hand with you, your CV, some of your educational documents, and some of the um, essays that you would be working on. Uh, so you can look at what the questions are on the website, but it's a good idea to have these while you're filling your application. Um, the applications will undergo a review process. It's a review process where the applications are independently, re independently reviewed by a panel of experts, and from the top five or 10% of the applications, we invite them for an interview. Our interview panel consists of uh, professors in universities around the US and around the world, uh, members of our executive team, and uh, some of our senior scholars. And this interview would be based on your 
uh, motivation for graduate school, your application itself, and some of your academics. And then from there, we'll select a final of 25 students. So right now, we're focusing on the application uh, part of uh, SSGSA. Uh, on our website, when you do apply, you will find our application consists of 10 steps. Uh, the first step is your basic personal information, then some information about your academics. Uh, and then steps three, four, and five are about your research experience and work experience any, and any sort of workshops or posters that you've done. This is the part where you can really highlight some of the uh, work that you've been doing outside of your academics for specifically for graduate school. Um, any sort of research experience or work experience really does help in your application. And we would really like to know that so that we can uh, give a holistic review of your application. In step six, you uh, enter some of your curricular activities. So these are just some activities outside your academics and research, which you feel that can be helpful for your uh, application. Uh, step seven is extracurricular activities. Uh, universities in uh, the US and around the world do take a look at some of the other things that you do while you are studying as well. So they are also important and uh, we'd encourage you to mention those here as well. Uh, step eight is about essay questions. So we have a list of essay questions that we have uh, on our application and you can take a look at that and um, answer them. And finally, some other information, if you feel necessary, you can add that. And step 10 really isn't a step. You just review and submit your application. So that is the gist of the application. But if you have any questions or any concerns about the application or about SSDSA in general, you can reach us out on social media. We have all our links here listed uh, here on the slide. And if you have any questions, you can always email them to us at SSDSA.us. Uh, we have uh, a contact information uh, page listed over there where you'll have uh, some of our contact details. And right now in this, a session, you can also enter some of your questions in the chat box, and then we can get to those questions um, right now. So thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I guess I can open up the Q&A section. So please enter any questions that you have in the chat, and we can get to them one by one. So uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and you can speak. So I do see one question in the chat already. Uh, question is from Sadia Khan. Uh, I am in final year of a three years bachelor's program. Uh, can I apply for SSGSA? So uh, according to our eligibility criteria, uh, you need to have at least four years of uh, some sort of undergraduate study in your application. So a three years bachelor's would uh, not be enough. You would either have to be currently enrolled in a master's program or any, any other program to be able to qualify that minimum four years. So uh, I hope that helps. Yeah, and just to add in uh, uh, for us uh, suggestions. Yeah, thank you very much for us. Uh, so though you can you cannot apply for us a GSA because of some, you know, uh, our, like our, the way that we work, but you can definitely apply to in some of the European universities as we see that a three year bachelor's. And please feel to write us for that. We'll be happy to connect with the people. If you're More um, I don't see any more questions, but if anyone does have any questions, they can uh, feel free to unmute themselves and you can either ask directly or um, in the chat. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, if, yeah, so if, if you don't have any questions, uh, you know, let us uh, take this event to its end. And for that, I would like to invite Rehan Bai for uh, for the vote of thanks. Thank, thank you, Sachin. Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone. Um, I just want to express my deep gratitude to uh, Professor Salma Ahmed, Dr. Maheshwari had to leave, um, but um, Seherish, Sadia, or Ahmed Faraz, all the speakers today, and especially Sachin, uh, for coordinating this event. Such an important event and such an important moment in uh, SSGSA's history and life where uh, we are celebrating our successful women scholars. I think that to me is, is something that is incredible having been a part of this journey from the beginning, from day one, to see this uh, nucleus of you know four or five people having grown to this 
this place where we are we are celebrating um you know people of accomplished scholars like Sadia and Sehrish who have inspired us today with their stories of resilience with their stories of determination ambition passion i mean it's unbelievable Sehrish was thinking about what she wants to do with her career with her life when she was in 10th standard i couldn't i couldn't think beyond my next you know, cricket game so i think that is that is truly remarkable and inspiring and that actually speaks to why it is so important for us to continue to encourage uh, this this really um, you know, i think dr ahmed professor ahmed said this best that you know women are going to be the, the, the they are the most important contributors to our society and i feel like this is this is the place this is the time for you to be architects of your own destiny um you know platforms like ssgsa can only provide you with opportunities to um you know catalysts to bring your careers to the next level to, to give you opportunities to uh, ignite that potential but you really have to drive your destiny you really have to take that first step go overcome that inhibition overcome the people who who say that you you can't do this um and and you really have to continue to push forward with that single minded focus to achieve your dreams because you are capable of so much more and as a father of two little girls myself um i i feel fortunate that my my daughters are now living in a in a world where they have the same opportunities as everyone else to um to make something out of their lives to be able to become uh, contributors to the betterment of this society and this world and our nations but they can only do that if they have the passion they have the persistence the resilience the determination and the ambition that we saw from all the great speakers today from dr ahmed from dr maheshwari um uh, sehrish sadia these are truly heroes that are inspire not just women scholars but inspire all of us in our everyday life and should continue to inspire us so i know we've already exceeded our time by 10 minutes so i won't take too much more time but i really really again uh, my deepest appreciation and gratitude for all the speakers uh, for all the attendees who were able to dial in despite it being a saturday evening in india um, and and really encourage any student that is considering even on the fence please just go ahead take the plunge do it you can you can really decide what you want your life to be if you take the reins in your own hands so if you need any support any guidance any mentorship any questions we are always here so as as a family as as a ssgsa family um all of us are always here to answer any questions you may ever have uh, with that i will hand it over to sachin to close us out but thank you very much assalam alaikum thank you riyan bhai for such a very strong and wonderful word of thanks so uh, just as a last note as a as the red ssgsa chair i would like to assure you that ssgsa will help you in all the possible way we can to to the best of our capabilities please always feel free to reach out to us we will give our best to help us and i would like to leave you uh, to think about and to apply for us a gsa with uh, one of the very nice couplet from majas majas laknavi who says ki tere mathe pe to yahan chal acha tha to isse ek parcham bana leti to khub tha thank you with, with this note thank you thank you very much for joining us today and good luck with the applications thank you Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.